I have been referencing this in many episodes on my channel, but what exactly is GitOps? The term is a dichotomy of two components, Git and operations. Git being the component where all the source code are stored, along with the underlying processes to ensure quality before production deployment. And this production deployment is a business operations component that sits on the other side of the spectrum. When shipping infrastructure code changes to different environments, I usually run a set of prep and Terraform commands locally, or as part of continuous integration, which is probably the most appropriate way of doing it. However, with a DevOps mindset, we are always in the lookout for the most efficient and effective way of doing things. And GitOps is a framework that would satisfy these needs. What this entails is that we allow Git to control quality checks, audit all the activities against your infrastructure code, and encapsulate all the commands required to stand up your infrastructure and enable operations. If you're new to this channel, I'm George and you're on PubSpot, a space where I show and tell practical examples and sample implementations around DevOps and cloud technology in general. In today's episode, I will be making the necessary changes to integrate my GitHub repositories with my custom Run Atlantis endpoint and enable a secure GitOps setup with Atlantis. So let's start coding. In the previous episode, I have set up a proper endpoint for my Run Atlantis service and made this available through the internet. The first thing that I need to do today is fix the integration between my GitHub account and my Run Atlantis endpoint. And to do this, I will head to my GitHub account. And remember that I already have a GitHub application configured for this integration. So what I'm going to do is click my profile right here and then click on settings and then scroll all the way down and click on developer settings and under github apps click the edit button next to my pre-configured run atlantis app so all i need to do is update the webhook url with the proper atlantis endpoint that i created in the last episode which you can access right here so let's head to that section. And update the field and ensure that there's slash events at the end of the URL. And then click save changes. Now let me switch to a Git repository that has infrastructure code in it. This is the Git repository that I created for my basic Lambda function. And in order for me to make changes to the infrastructure that has been stood up in this repository, I will have to follow the usual Git process. So I will create a separate branch out of my main trunk. And then I can start implementing the changes inside this branch. In order for me to be able to illustrate what happens in the GitOps workflow with Atlantis, let's pretend I need to create an AWS SSM parameter store resource. So I am going to open my main.tf. And then all the way to the end of this file, I will create my parameter store record. And then I will set the basic name, type, and value properties for this resource. And usually what I would do after finishing up my code changes is to switch to my VS Code terminal and then start exporting my TF workspace environment variable, initialize my AWS credentials, and then run my Terraform commands to update my infrastructure. But because I want my infrastructure code deployment process to follow the GitOps workflow with Atlantis, what I will do is commit and stage my changes. And then if I'm happy with all my changes, I can then start pushing this into my GitHub remote repository.
And now, if I switch back to my browser, and then on GitHub, I will head to the repository that I'm working on, which in my case is all about Lambda repository. If you have a pending pull request, you will normally have a message on the page on raising a pull request, like what I have right here. Otherwise, you can go to the list of branches on this repository by clicking this branches link right here. And then find the branch that you're working on, which in my case is this one, test run Atlantis, and then click the new pull request button next to it. And then you can start filling up all the necessary fields. And then once you're done, click create pull request. In this status check section of the pull request, you will notice a few line items in here that relate to Run Atlantis. What we are seeing here is GitHub integration with my custom Run Atlantis working properly. GitHub is sending a message to Run Atlantis to start running Terraform plan. And if I go ahead and click the details link right next to one of these entries, like right this one. The Atlantis page loads up showing a log that looks very familiar. This is in fact the same set of logs or output that I see when I run Terraform plan locally. And once this process is done, a new comment will be added to my pull request that will also contain the output of the run. So let's head back to my pull request. And this is the comment added by Run Atlantis providing a summary result of the run. If I expand the show output section in this comment, it will show what will change in my infrastructure if I go ahead and apply my change. What happens here is that instead of me running this locally from exporting my TF workspace environment variable, setting up my AWS credentials and running Terraform plan, Run Atlantis encapsulates all the commands and runs everything for me. If I'm working in a team, what I can then do is assign this pull request to someone else for approval and have them review my infrastructure code, as well as the result of the plan, which is available on the comment. And if they are happy, the infrastructure change can then be applied by following the instructions in this comment right here. So what this instruction tells me is that if I want to apply the changes to my infrastructure, I need to put this in the comment section. So let me copy this and head all the way down to the comment section of this pull request and paste that in and add that as a comment. Notice that a new set of run Atlantis items in the check section gets created automatically. This is again GitHub sending a message to run Atlantis to trigger Terraform apply. And if I go ahead and open this details link right next to the Atlantis job, it loads up run Atlantis and this time it's loading up the logs for Terraform apply. Like what we saw with the plan earlier, once this is completed, a new comment will be added in the pull request. So let's get back to my pull request. And this is the new comment for the apply. And once everything is done, I can then start merging my change back to the trunk and the whole GitOps process is complete. And that's all I have for today. On the next episode, I will go through some items to improve the setup of my GitOps workflow with Run Atlantis. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.